Welcome to Football Daily, where today we're running through 10 managers who are past their sell-by date. 10. Unai Emery in the summer of 2016, Unai Emery was very much on a roll. The Spanish manager had just led Sevilla to their third consecutive Europa League crown, defeating Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool in the final. And this excellent record in navigating the tournament marked him out as the ideal candidate for the PSG job, with the French giant determined to seriously challenge in the Champions League after years of underachievement in the competition. Less than four years later, and Emery is without a job. Despite winning five major trophies in his two years in Paris, he missed out on the league and title by eight points in his first campaign and couldn't take them past the UCL last 16 with an infamous loss to Barcelona in 2017, where he went into the second leg 4-0 up, particularly damning for the former Valencia coach. He left France having reinforced the view that PSG were just as spineless as they were star-studded, and this trend continued at Arsenal. At the Emirates, he took a team which had been defensively poor, but at least good going forward under Arsene Wenger, and turned them into a side which did neither particularly well. Continually outshot by lower table opposition and blunted creatively without the often snubbed Mesa Ozil, the Gunners blew their chance to take fourth in the league before getting trounced by Chelsea in the Europa League final, and they would only regress further come the 2019-20 season. Having ultimately failed in two of the most coveted jobs in world football, how Emery's career progresses from here is anyone's guess. 9. Laurent Blanc The man Paris Saint-Germain hired Unai Emery to replace, Laurent Blanc has been out of work since leaving the Parc de France in the summer of 2016. And it's somewhat surprising. A famously intelligent player, Laurent Blanc's entry into management was seamless, taking his first job at Bordeaux in 2007 and leading them to the Ligue 1 title in just his second season, setting a new record for consecutive league wins in the process. And he was just as excellent during his stint in Paris, consolidating PSG as France's monopoly power. He won three titles on the trot, two consecutive domestic trebles, developed talents like Marco Verratti and Marquinhos, and squeezed the very best out of an ageing Zlatan Ibrahimovic. But in the near four years since his departure from the French capital, there's been little to suggest he can compete for a job at a top European club again. Snubbed by Lyon in favour of Rudy Garcia following the sacking of Silvino in October 2019, Blanc was apparently targeting the summer of 2020 for his return to management. But the man who was once tipped to succeed Alex Ferguson at Man United is in big danger of being forgotten. 8. Steve McLaren Steve McLaren has had a much better managerial career than many would have you believe. He may be remembered primarily as the Wally with the Broly from his failed tenure as England boss, but that was preceded by a period in charge of Middlesbrough in which he won the club its first ever piece of major silverware and took them to the UEFA Cup final. And followed by a successful stint at FC Twente, where he won the Dutch outfit his first air divisie, beating out an Ajax side containing Luis Suarez in the process. But since then, he's presided over a few disasters. A year on from his title win at Twente, he nearly got Wolfsburg relegated from the Bundesliga, despite having Diego, Mandzukic and Dzeko in his team. Five years later, he all but took Newcastle down from the Premier League, leaving Rafa Benitez to sort out his mess with 10 games remaining of the season. He hasn't lasted a season and a job since. He failed in his second stint in charge of Derby, and in April 2019 was sacked by QPR following a run of one win in 15 games. A year down the line, and McLaren remains out of the job. 7. Mark Hughes It's now well over a year since Mark Hughes was last in a job, and it doesn't feel like he'll be back in the Premier League anytime soon. After sacking him, Southampton went back to their previous strategy of hiring more technically astute coaches from abroad, while other English clubs have favoured younger homegrown talent with fresh ideas. See Brighton and Graham Potter. And in truth, Hughes can no longer count himself among the best British managers. The likes of Rodgers, Deitch and Wilder now seem light years ahead of him tactically, while Pearson and Hodgson clearly trump him for competence. It's a shame for a manager who was once pretty promising. He enjoyed an impressive spell in charge at Blackburn in the mid-2000s, taking them to within four points of the top four in 2006, and the 18 months which followed at Man City after he left Ewood Park is better than many remember. But there is little to suggest from the last decade that Hughes can still manage at the top level. His short tenure at QPR was a disaster, as were his two final seasons at Stoke, where he won just three of his final 15 games in charge, losing 7-2 to Man City, 5-1 to Spurs and 5-0 to Chelsea in the same run. And once down at St Mary's, he won just 18.5% of his games in charge, by far the worst average of his career. 
6. Cesar Prandelli Much like Hughes and McLaren, Cesar Prandelli's best days were very much back in the 2000s. The Italian manager helped launch the careers of Adrian Mutu and Alberto Giladino at Parma, and was a revolution at Fiorentina, turning a relegation threatened side into regular top four contenders, and being named Serie A Coach of the Year in the 2007-08 season. This success led him to being appointed as Italy's national team coach in 2010, and while he managed to get them to the final of the 2012 Euros, his reign was otherwise uninspiring. They failed to get out of the group at the 2014 World Cup, and Prandelli ended his tenure with a poor win rate of 41%, matching Marcelo Lippi's disastrous second stint before him. Since then, he hasn't lasted more than 25 days in a job, trying his hand at Galatasaray, Valencia and even the UAE, before getting chucked in the deep end at Genoa, keeping them up on goal difference after the sale Christoph Piontek to AC Milan. It's fair to say it's been a rough few years for Prandelli. 5. Remy Gard You'd be forgiven for having forgotten all about Remy Gard, as unless you follow the MLS, he hasn't really been around for a while. The French coach was sacked by Montreal Impact halfway through the 2019 season and hasn't been in work since. And judging by his last venture on European shores, he may be waiting a while for an offer. Gard's spell at Aston Villa in 2015-16 was a disaster. He won just three of his 23 games in charge, somehow making a side which had looked lackluster at best under Tim Sherwood even worse. Reports since have confirmed the former Arsenal player was massively unpopular at Villa Park, with Gabby Bomlahor even claiming he had told a young Jack Grealish to stop smiling in training. After showing such promising signs at Lyon, where he was assistant before taking the top job in 2011, it looks like Remy Gard's managerial career could be stagnating before it's even taken off. 4. Claudio Ranieri Perhaps one of the harsher inclusions on this list, Claudio Ranieri has done well to stay relevant for so long. The Italian coach has been in the management game since the mid-1980s, and his CV is not without its achievements, with his Premier League title win with Leicester the pick of the bunch. But since the relatively decent season at Nantes, which followed his departure from the King Power, Ranieri has become an unlikely firefighter, hired exclusively to save clubs from relegation. Whether he's equipped to do so is another matter. His three-month spell in charge of Fulham in 2018-19 was nothing short of a disaster, with the West London club losing nearly double the games they won and drew combined with the Tinkerman at the helm. This term, he was hired by Sampdoria, with the Genoa club bottom of Serie A when he took over from Eusebio Di Francesco for the second time in a matter of months. To be fair, they are now 16th, but are still only a point off the drop, not great for a side which hasn't finished outside the top half since 2016. With trips to Inter, Atalanta, Roma and Juventus still to come should the season be resumed. If he does take Samp down, it may be time for Ranieri to reassess his options at 68. After a 35-year career in the dugout, no one would blame him. 3. David Moyes Once again roped into the West Ham job after yet another crisis at the London Stadium, many weren't surprised to see David Moyes back in the dugout in East London. Such is the club's reputation for nonsensical decision-making. But while Manuel Pellegrini's project had fallen on the rocks, with the Chilean losing 9 out of his final 12 league games in charge, there were countless more inspiring choices than the former Everton manager to take his place. The aforementioned Unai Emery for one, as well as Javi Garcia, Marcelino, Chris Uton, or even Eddie Howe. A big favourite of David Gold from his first stint with the club in 2017-18, Moyes has been entrusted with keeping the club in the Premier League, but it's not going to plan. When the Scottish coach took over, they sat one point above the relegation zone, and as this goes out, just goal difference separates them from the drop, despite Bournemouth and Aston Villa enduring horrible runs of form in this time. No wonder Vice Chairman Karen Brady wants the season voided. In truth, Moyes probably shouldn't be managing a Premier League club, let alone one with ambitions of European football. He hasn't lasted as many as 50 games in a job since his infamous season at Man United when he was sacked after 51 matches. In that time, he's led Real Sociedad into a relegation battle, overseen Sunderland's demotion from the Prem, and lost more games than he's won or drawn in all but one of his jobs. 2. Jose Mourinho the most decorated man on this list, Jose Mourinho's achievements as a manager cannot be questioned. But his latest job is a sign that the Portuguese coach is not at the level he once was. Tottenham may have improved greatly over the last half decade, reaching last year's Champions League final and have a lovely new stadium to match, but they are not Real Madrid or Man United. 
and it already feels like his tenure in North London is destined for disappointment. Brought in to do the one thing Pochettino couldn't guarantee, win trophies. By the middle of March, he had already failed on that front. Furthermore, his side looked increasingly likely to miss out on Champions League football for the first time since 2015, and his relationship with the players already looked strained, with Tangi and Dombele the latest to be publicly criticised. And while his at times boring brand of football is nothing new, the superb defensive coaching he was once famous for has seemingly left him too. At Man United, he managed to make the backline worse despite spending nearly £100 million on it. And at Spurs, there has been almost no change. In the league, they have conceded 1.35 goals a game with him in charge compared to 1.4 with Poch, keeping just two clean sheets in 26 games in all competitions and recording a poor 42% win rate. With no guarantee of further big investment anytime soon, Mourinho's Spurs project could already be grinding to a halt. 1. Jurgen Klinsmann Considering the way his latest venture ended, we'd be very surprised to see Jurgen Klinsmann back in a job anytime soon. The German coach ended a three-year absence from the game in November 2019, when he took the Hertha Berlin job, but became quickly frustrated at not being given full control over transfers, despite them investing 76 million euros on new players in January, outspending every other club in Europe. Less than a month later, Klinsmann had resigned, announcing it over Facebook. Clearly, he isn't the easiest figure to work with, which may explain why he was out of the game for so long and his record as a manager is patchy at best. Following his trophyless one-season stint in charge of Bayern Munich in 2008-09, Philipp Lahm claimed he communicated tactics so poorly that the players themselves had to meet before kickoff to come up with a game plan. And while his five-year spell with the USA started brightly, it ended in disaster. They lost to Jamaica and Panama in the 2015 CONCACAF Gold Cup, and he was sacked the following year after the horrific start to the 2018 World Cup qualification campaign they ended up not making the tournament for the first time in 32 years. With barely over a season of club management experience and a 16-year coaching career, Klinsmann is the furthest thing from a safe pair of hands. A job with a national side outside of the FIFA Top 50 beckons. So those were our 10 managers who we think are finished, but have we missed out anyone else? Please let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more, please click on screen for another FD banger. And as always, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe.